1972, there were two total solar eclipses that crossed over Nova Scotia. And then later in 1972, Carly Simon wrote the song, You're So Vain. And it had that line in the song that just stuck with me. Then you flew your Learjet to Nova Scotia to see a total eclipse of the sun. To a 12-year-old farm girl, 12-year-old Hispanic farm girl, stuck in Central Texas. <laughs> that was just the epitome of freedom to see the wonders of the universe. I sang that song over and over again. Because you see, in 1972, women were starting to change their options. We no longer were supposed to be the girlfriend of the guy with the cool car. We were starting to dream about owning that cool car ourselves. <laughs> we were no longer going to be the wife of a doctor, the wife of an engineer, the wife of an accountant, a lawyer. We could do these great things ourselves. Flew your Learjet to Nova Scotia to see a total eclipse of the sun. I know that that song is about a woman complaining about an arrogant man, but I wanted to be that person. I dreamed about seeing that total eclipse of the sun. And in 1991, 18 years later, I stood on a beach in north of Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, with my very fashionable solar eclipse shades, <laughs> in the path of the total eclipse of the sun. We watched as the moon take its first tiny little bite out of the sun. And when that happened, somebody yelled, first contact. <gasps> we were getting excited. And the moon kept taking bigger and bigger and bigger bite out of the sun. At about 80%, the light was noticeably dimmed. Now you still couldn't see the sun without your shades. And when you did, it looked like this at 80%. The light was very, very dimmed. When you looked at the ground and you saw the sand, it was very strangely sparkly, almost like little rainbows everywhere. When you stood under a tree and looked at the light coming through the tree, all the little light places were half moons. And that what had been a searingly hot day on a beach in Mexico had become rather pleasant and cool. It had dropped 20 degrees. And we watched as it took bigger and bigger bites till somebody finally yelled, diamond ring! And this was the sun's rays coming through the mountains of the moon, the very last sun's rays. You could see it with your naked eye reaching out from behind the moon and into space. I watched as flares jumped out from behind the moon and I stood in awe and amazement for those few minutes. I was touched in my soul because I realized that for this moment to happen, the sun, the moon, the earth, and I had to exist in that space and time. I realized the greatness of the universe that we didn't exist at all. And I stood there in just awe and amazement. And then all too soon and all too briefly, it was over. And I asked myself the question that's inspired much of my life. When and where is the next one? <laughs> but it hasn't always been this way. In ancient times, solar eclipses, lunar eclipses were something to be feared. It would often lead to the sacrifice of animals, humans, and other atrocities. But such is the power of knowledge and science 
that we no longer have to fear this great and wonderful event because we know when, we know why, we know how, and we know where it's going to happen. But just because we know these things, it doesn't decrease the beauty and the wonder and the awe. So what is a solar eclipse? I'm gonna start with the basics. I'm pretty sure everybody knows it here. Sun is in the middle of the solar system. Earth revolves around the sun. Moon revolves around the earth. No flat earthers here. We're good? Okay, we're starting there. So as, orbital, as the orbits happen, the sun and the moon actually appear from the earth to be the same size. And the reason is, is that the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon. And the moon is 400 times closer to the earth. So they appear to be the same. Also, as the moon orbits the earth, it casts a shadow behind it, especially during the new moon. However, the moon's orbit is such that it takes it below above and below the plane of the ecliptic, and the plane of the ecliptic is that line directly between the sun and the earth. Only when the moon is on that plane of the ecliptic does the, earth, the moon's shadow fall on the earth like this. Now, one more factor. There's apogee and perigee. Perigee is when the moon is closer to the earth, so it appears bigger. Apogee is when the moon is farther from the earth, so it appears farther away. A total eclipse only happens at perigee. At apogee, you'll get an annular eclipse, and again, we'll need your, part, your solar eclipse glasses. You cannot look at it without proper eye protection. A total eclipse, you can look at with your naked eye safely. The lumens are about the same as a full moon, but only during totality. So let's review. New moon, earth plane ecliptic, perigee, and you in the path. In order to see a total solar eclipse, you have to be in the path. This map represents the solar eclipses I have seen in my lifetime. I saw my 15th in Palu, Indonesia earlier this year. I have traveled the world seeing this wonderful cosmic event. I have traveled to Europe, the Caribbean, to Africa, to Australia, to Indonesia, and beyond. In fact, in 2003, I had one of my most challenging eclipses occur. It was in Antarctica. And I didn't know how I was going to get there. Lucky for me, there are other umbrophiles, that's what we call ourselves, the people who chase the solar eclipses. There are other umbrophiles just as insane as I am. <laughs> so what we did was we talked to Qantas, and there was a plane arranged to fly over Antarctica to see a total eclipse of the sun. Oh, wow. A 12-year-old dr girl's dream can come true. You see here the eclipse in the sky, the moon shadow on the Antarctic ice, and the sun coming up from behind it. It wasn't a Learjet, but I flew to see a total eclipse of the sun. August 21st, 2017, the total solar eclipse is coming to the United States. It goes from sea to shining sea. It's a 75, it's a 70 mile wide path starting in Lincoln City, Oregon, going all the way to Charleston, South Carolina. Any reliable car can get you there. I highly recommend the trip. And I know we have a lot of educators here. Kids, play hooky. <laughs> Talk to your parents, reliable cars, play hooky. And if you're an educator, you should be planning the trip. <laughs> now, do you guys are 
inspired to possibly see one. I know I'm seeing it. But how do you know where to go? NASA and Google are your friends. This is a NASA Google map. If you click anywhere in between those blue lines or along that red line, it'll tell you exactly the start of the partial eclipse, the start of the total eclipse, the maximum eclipse, the end of the total eclipse, and the end of the partial eclipse for that location. Now here in Texas, we're only going to get about 80%. You will not get the full effect of the total solar eclipse, and you will need to have proper eye protection at all times. But plan a trip to see this if you can in your lifetime. The next time we get an eclipse this good is going to be 2045. That means a lot of you youngsters here will be in your 40s and 50s. This is the best opportunity for many of us to see an eclipse in our lifetime. Again, more details on the solar eclipse. Now, you can't go see a solar eclipse. It's going to burn out your eyes. Partial eclipses are dangerous, and you do have to have proper eye protection. These right now are available for two bucks on Amazon, 20 bucks for a pack of, pack of 10. You can also use the method that I used for my very first partial eclipse, which is you take a piece of cardboard, you poke a hole in it, and you hold up a piece of paper looking away from the sun and be able to gaze safely at a partial eclipse. That's how I saw my first one and was still inspired to try to see a total myself. Or you can use welder's glass, which right now is a buck fifty at Home Depot, number fourteen or greater, to safely see the, a, a partial eclipse. Here in Dallas, we will only get eighty percent. And I know you educators in the office, in, in the audience, Mr. Douglas, you're probably not going to encourage the whole school to cut class to go see this. It is the first day of school, by the way. <laughs> so. I've already adopted a couple of schools that I will be handing out glasses. I really do encourage that if you're going to be here to adopt a school or talk to a civic group or something to try to get these glasses and viewers to everyone in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Not just in South Dallas or North Dallas, but everyone. I'm adopting my home school, the school that I grew up in, that little farm in Texas. But I really encourage you to try to do that. And now, I'm going to give you a taste of why I chase eclipses. That video, my narrative here, any pictures you see on the internet, any videos you see on the internet, anything you can capture on your phone does not do the experience justice at all. I really do encourage you to get outside the lines and get in the path. Thank you. <laughs>